Listen to this very carefully. If you want to make this world a slightly better place to live, try to develop an extra eye to see the unseen, an extra ear to hear the unheard, an extra heart to feel the unfelt. I'm Joseph Anaguti Jose, an RJ, and I do a show named Straight from the Heart. It's an evening show, and I talk to them about life stories. And RJ's role is to connect with people. And my way of connecting with people is to tell them stories. I tell them things which they have never heard. I tell them things in a different way so that they look at things in a different way. I gave them emotions so that they, they feel things slightly better. Today I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tell you stories. Just three different stories. Story number one, it's about Masala Dosha. I did my MBA from one of the well-known institutions from Cochin. And my dad was kind enough. He took a loan of seven lakhs to teach me MBA. But the loan was in my name. <laughs> Out of the 120 students of MBA batch eight, only one boy couldn't even clear the internals of mathematics. That boy was me. Thank you. My parents were shell-shocked, even I was shocked. Seven lakhs loan in my name. So I went to my max teacher and said, teacher, I just need two marks to clear my internals. If I can't clear the internals, I won't be writing the university exam. That means I won't be getting any job from this college. She said, no. I begged again, teacher, please, just two marks. Joseph, no, maybe you can talk to the director. I went to the director's cabin and said, Dear ma'am, I have, I have a request for you. Joseph, please come. She gave me a very beautiful smile. She asked, Joseph, what is it? Ma'am, I need two marks to clear the internals. I know that. Could you please give me two marks? No. <laughs> ma'am, my future, I won't get any job. Joseph, no. You were like a joker. You were making others laugh. Now all are laughing at you. You are not serious. I was like a rebel. I was like, OK, fine. So what next? Juniors will come. You will have to rewrite the exam, max with them. At the same time, you will have exams of second semester. You're going to struggle, Joseph. I know. It's OK. I left the place. There was one friend. You know, we all have the very close friends. Vivek is slightly dramatic. He went to the max teacher and said, dear ma'am, we all breathe the same air. <laughs> Give him two marks. Then she said, you stand and breathe as much as you want. I won't give him too much. That's what she said. That evening, I went home. As soon as I reached, my, as usual, my mother was about to prepare a cup of tea. I said, mom, today I don't want tea. Please sit. She was like, what? Please sit. Dad, don't go for a walk today. Can you please sit? I have something for you. What, Joseph? Just listen to this carefully that I failed in max. Joseph, just don't do your usual kidding stuff. No, that I'm serious. I failed. That means I wouldn't be able to write the university exam. I'm not sure if I get placed. My sincere apologies. My mom started to cry like any other mother. My dad was like, OK, Anangutti, don't, don't prepare tea. Joseph, come, let's go out. Then I thought he wanted me to take outside and scold me. He asked me to follow him. I went behind him. He went to a restaurant named Hotel Runs. I was afraid, what's happening? What, what's going wrong? Then he said, two cups of tea and one masala dosha. Then even I got confused, whether I got distinction or whether I failed. So I looked at dad and said, dad, I failed. Joseph, I know, I know you're struggling, Joseph. Why are you giving that fake smile? I know the pain that you're having deep inside. Why are you struggling? Why are you faking it? You like masala dosa, right? Have it. Till that moment, I was not crying. Even when I begged to my teachers for two marks, I was not crying. There was something moving inside my heart. He asked me to, take, to have the masala dosa. I made a small piece, dipped it in chutney, put it in my mouth. Then he tapped on my shoulder and said, Joseph, your parents are there with you. Just don't worry. You failed, that's OK. It's not about how many times you fall in life. It's all about how many times you rise after the fall. That was the moment 
A small teardrop started from the corner of my eye, touched my lips, I fell onto the masala dosha. My dad told me, don't worry, we are all there with you. Struggle, work hard. So, time went by, juniors came. I was the smartest among the batch. I welcomed them. Welcome to the world of opportunities. Study well, rock. <laughs> then I went and wrote internal exams with them. And they were like, hi Cheta, why you are here? Why you guys are here? Now, it's our exam. Even I have to write it, yes. So you couldn't clear the internals? No, I couldn't. So the other day you said, just rock and all. Yeah, I do tell stuff like this, but I couldn't clear it. I feel embarrassed, you know. But you know what happened? I started to read a lot, work harder. I wrote internal exams with them. Second semester completed. That time, different organizations, companies started to visit our college. So they asked, give us the first semester mark sheet. Based on that, we'll select students. When you decide to work hard, God will appear in front of you in different ways. That year, it appeared in the form of MG University. <laughs> we didn't get our first semester marks card. <laughs> then, then the first organization that visited was Can Core Ingredients Limited. They said, okay, if mark sheets are not available, let everyone sit. Let everyone sit. <laughs> so even I sat with them. There were five different stages. I cleared all of them. And towards the final stage, there were five of them. They will select one. And I still remember the question asked by the interviewer. Now, Joseph, tell me, what inspired you the most? Sir, I don't know if you believe this. It's a masala dosa that inspired me the most. <laughs> Come on, Joseph, do you want to impress us? Is that a cooked up story? No, no, it's a cooked up masala dosa. <laughs> that helped me. Then I told them the very same story which I told you just now. After two weeks, they published the result. On the very same notice board where I saw my name in red ink, Joseph couldn't clear the internals. On the same notice board, Cancore Ingredients Limited selected a young boy named Joseph K. Juice. <laughs> story doesn't end here. You know, when you decide to come up in life after failure, you know who is more enthusiastic? <laughs> God. You know what happened? On that same notice board, there was another announcement. Cast your award for your best favorite senior. Cast your award for the best outgoing student. The batchmates can vote, the juniors can vote, the teachers can vote. All these juniors knew only one boy who wrote exams with them. <laughs> they all voted for me. I became uh, the best outgoing student of MBA batch sheet that year. I have a picture here. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that was the guy who bought me masala dosa. And that's a three-fourth note mundu. He's very your guy. The first sentence which I told, feeling the unfelt. I was down, I was broken. Then my dad came to me and told, Joseph, we are there with you. He felt my heart. The only boy who couldn't even clear the internals in the history of that college was the first boy to get placed in an organization. And you know what that's written? That's written Mr. Fireside. And do you know who gave that to me? The director who said I'm a joker. That's a challenge. <laughs> Story number one ends here. Story number two, a multicolor pin. When I was in fourth standard, I was like, I was a very mischievous boy. I, I used to make comments in class. I used to disturb my teachers. There was one teacher who wrote a letter to my parents telling, please teach your boy some manners. He keeps on commenting in my class and I find it very difficult to conduct the class. I was like that. There was another teacher, her name is Elsie. One day she was teaching us moral science. And she taught us, guys, do good things. If you do good things, God will bless you with good health. Do you know Mother Teresa? At this old age, she's very strong. Then I stood up and said, I beg to defer. She was like, she was surprised. Come on, Joseph, what is it? Yesterday's newspaper. I read Mother Teresa is hospitalized. I don't think she will last for long. <laughs> this was a comment I made. Her eyes was, were like, like this. Joseph, 
and she started to laugh. She couldn't control her laughter. And that day, she called my mother and told, please ask Joseph not to make any comments in my class. I can't control my laughter. On the last day in my fourth standard, my teacher, Elsie, came to the classroom with different set of awards, certificates, and there was this multicolor pen. She gave certificate to the student who scored high, in, high marks and best uh, enthusiastic boy, such kind of awards. And towards the end, this pen was for teacher's favorite student. She announced, my favorite student in this class is Joseph. She called me, I was surprised. Me? She even to told my mother that I'm disturbing. Then she said a small thing, Joseph, you are a very talkative guy. I you know what? I love taking classes in your class. If you are there inside, keep on talking. You can become a public speaker. You can become a great entertainer. Do you know what job I'm doing now? I'm a radio jockey. Do you know where I am now? TEDx. I, I owe a lot to that teacher. When one teacher found that I am a nuisance, another one told, Joseph, you have something inside you. Nurture it. Last month, I got a letter on my table at home. Dear Joseph, I'm going to retire from the long service of teaching on this 14th. I want you to come and speak a few words. And that, that, that letter was from my LC teacher. And I went there. I shared the stage with her. I took a selfie. And I told all the students and teachers there, guys, for a student, the greatest blessing one can ever get is the love and happiness that your teacher gets when they think about you. And the greatest blessing, and who is the greatest teacher? A good teacher talks, a better teacher explains, but a great teacher inspires. And she inspired me. When others saw that I'm a nuisance, she saw the unseen. Story number three. Her name is Sarah. That's English name. She has a Chinese name as well. Make sure that you don't spit on others' face when you pronounce this. It's she, Ru, Wien. That's how the name is pronounced. And we give them English names so that you can call them easily. For example, if you are going to die and you want a glass of water before you die, if you call she, Ru, Wien, I need a glass of water, you will die before that. <laughs> if it is Sara, Sara, I need a glass of water. Drink, die. <laughs> so I was in China for one year. The Cancor Ingredients Limited, where I got placed, they sent me to China. I was there for one year. After one year's work, I was returning home, but I was not happy. Sarah was there to drop me at the airport. I was very sad. Then Sarah asked me, Josepha, why you are not happy? Uh, nothing, uh, my, my friend is getting married. Huh? You should be happy. No, 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 she is my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, you, you can't be happy. But Sarah wanted to make me laugh, bring a smile on my face before, before I left the place. She said a classical sentence, a beautiful sentence. If you guys are going through a breakup, if you guys are having a very bad relationship, take this. Take a deep breath and take this. Joseph, someone leaves from your life that's only for someone better to come. Someone leaves from your life only for someone better to come. Every breakup is a wake-up call. After all, it's not a breakdown, it's break up. <laughs> and that moment, I didn't smile. She said something after that. Joseph, be happy that you loved somebody. Be happy that somebody taught you love. It's a beautiful feeling, right? It's not about a long-term relationship. It's not about owning somebody. It's just the fact that you know you loved somebody. Sincerely. Be happy about it. You got a smile, Joseph. Convert your pain. I know it's a strugglesome process. I know there is a deep pain inside your heart. Convert the pain. How you convert the pain? I wrote about her. I started a blog named Buried Thoughts. The first chapter named Angel. At the age of 27, I wrote an autobiography. 
autobiography's name is Bari Thoughts. I dedicated my book to that girl. That's how I showed my love. If you have a, when, when you face a breakup, don't go to Facebook and put a post, some people cheat and leave you. <laughs> That's so pathetic, man. That's very old, old stuff. If you, are, if you are having a breakup, don't put posters and tell that person, see, this is for you. <laughs> no, that's a different way. If you're going through a pain, convert your pain. Every breakup is a wake-up call. Then I smiled. With a smile, I went back to India. The next day, I attended her wedding with my dad and mom. She looked the most beautiful in that day. My dad was there. My mom was there. I wished her good luck and came back. The breakup was beautiful. That's how you see things differently. The first sentence I told you. Try to develop an extra eye to see the unseen. An extra ear to hear the unheard. An extra heart to feel the unfelt. You know what, have you ever played the game called connecting the dots? There are different dots. You start from one dot to the other. You don't have any idea what kind of picture you, you're going to get, but you have to move. As and when you reach the last dot, you'll get a picture. Life is like connecting the dots. Whatever that happens in your life is a dot. You don't know why a breakup had. You don't know why you failed in the paper. You don't know why that person ditched you. You don't know, know why they didn't select you. These are all dots. But you have to move on. Okay, you had a breakup, that's a dot. Move on to the next dot. Again a failure, move on. Success, move on. Failure, move on. On your deathbed, when you connect that last dot, you will get a beautiful picture. And that's called life. That is <laughs> life. And what you need to connect the dots? Hope. You know what? The best gift a person can give to another person is hope when they are hopeless. This is my favorite quote. Hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good things ever dies. See, I'm concluding my speech. As an RJ, what I do is I try to connect with people. Every day, I'm trying to develop an extra eye so that I can see the unseen pain in your eyes. I'm developing an extra ear so that I can listen to your problems. I'm developing an extra heart so that I can feel those emotions. Try to develop an extra eye, extra ear, extra heart. Give hope to others. Thank you.